1 Corinthians 6 and Revelation chapter 20. Let's go to Revelation 20 first. Revelation 20, the judgment day. That appointed day of judgment is called the great white throne judgment. Now, let me, let me show you what religion does. I got to get this on there. You'll hear preachers talk about the judgment seat of Christ or the bema seat of Christ. Bema is the uh, Greek word behind judgment seat, 1 Corinthians. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. It's mentioned in 1 Corinthians 3, but it's actually the word is used in Romans 14 and 2 Corinthians 5. That's not this judgment out here. The judgment or the bema seat of Christ is for us believers. Only believers in the body of Christ are going to be there. Christ is going to have a judgment when he comes for the nation of Israel here first. He's going to have another judgment, Matthew chapter 25, for the nations, whether they get in the kingdom or not, how they blessed Israel out there in the future. But then after the, the, the kingdom, the 1,000-year first installment, he's going to have a great white throne judgment. Let's look at it. Chapter 20 of Revelation, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and of a great chain in his hand. Now, I personally believe this bottomless pit is hell. Hell is known as the pit in prophecy. Christ says hell was made for the devil and his angels. Some, angel, some fallen angels are already there, the ones who uh, went in unto the daughters of men back there. Some of his fallen angels aren't there. Satan is not there yet. When Satan's going to get there is going during this thousand-year period. Watch, watch what he says. And he laid, his, he laid hold on the dragon, that's Satan, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him how long? Okay. During the Lord's first installment of the Millennial Kingdom there, Satan won't be on the earth. He won't be able to tempt him. People won't be able to say, the devil made me do it. There's going to be perfect righteousness. Nobody's going to be able to fool you. Satan is in down, what I think is hell down there, okay? The bottomless pit. It's called bottomless because it just keeps enlarging. Lost people's souls are going for, you know, they're going down there. I'll show you what God's going to do to it. So there it is. But after that thousand years, watch what happens. Verse 3, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should, should deceive the nations no more till the, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose the season. So somebody might say, well, all those people on earth in that time, they're not being tempted by Satan like we are. They're not. What about them? God, he's going to let them out. After they get the perfect knowledge of Christ, the world, he's going to allow Satan to try to deceive them, and he's going to get a whole army of people, and God's just going to destroy them. God the Father from up there, destroy them. But here's what I want you to see. Verse 4, and I saw thrones. You see that thrones, plural? And they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them which were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, beheaded. That's why I think it's going to be Islam that's dealing with these Jews, because the way they like to kill them is to cut their heads off. For the word of God in which he had not, uh, not worshipped the beast, that's the Antichrist, nor his, neither his image, neither had received his mark, that's the mark of the beast, upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. These are the Jews. Now watch this. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is what? The first resurrection. So then he, he talks about Go down to verse 11. That's this one. That's at his return. After the thousand years, there's another one. We're going to come down to the end. Verse 11. And I saw a great white throne. That's why it's called a great white throne judgment. Watch this. Great white throne. And him that sat on it from whose face the earth and heaven fled. That's the Lord uh, fled away. That's the Lord. And there was no place found for them. Now watch this. Verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before who? God. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. So you can go ahead and read the rest of that, but I want you to see that these books or these scrolls are a record of every man's deeds. They think they're doing it in secret, Paul says. God says, angels, bring the book, pull the scroll before me. You see it all in angels. Oh, yeah, at this time on that day. That's, it's going to take a long time, this great white throne judgment. I think we'll be there. Let's end in 1 Corinthians 6. The mystery of Christ is that we're the body of Christ. And although this is not in prophecy, I'm going to tell you what I see when Paul says this. As we end in 1 Corinthians 6, the carnal Corinthians, we'll get to it in detail when we get there, but they're going to law one with another. 
Members of the body, brothers, go on the law over civil matters. He didn't do this, did he? Matters. Law. They're going before the, the magistrates against each other. Watch what Paul said. Verse 1. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the what? That's the exact same language about the Lord. And these saints are body saints because he goes, he's talking to the body. And if the world shall be judged by you, he said, you Corinthians, you're going to be part of this judgment where we judge the world. Are you not worthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge who? Angels, how much more things pertain to this life. And if, although it's true that we're going to rule over as far as judgment, the context of 1 Corinthians 6, you read it yourself, it wasn't just a ruling over. It was making some judgments, condemning the wicked, justifying the righteous. Christ is going to judge the world. But I believe one of the things we're going to do out here, and this is in a mystery, is be with him. And just like he did in the Old Testament where God has his sons, the angels, he says, what should we do? What about this? What about that? And they give him counsel. I believe it's going to be the same way. I was a jury foreman last year, as many of you all know. The judge had the last say, but he looked at the 12 of us. He says, look, I have the final say, but I need your input. He told us the law. We went in there and made the decision on this guy's life. The judge took what we said, and he looked at it, and he says, yeah or nay, and he went with it. So I think that's what it's going to be like when we judge the people out there. Lost men and, and, and the lost angels are going to be judged and thrown in the lake of fire at the judgment day. You don't have to be at that judgment day. You can be at this judgment day if you trust Christ, the one where believers are at. All you have to do is believe that Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. You believe that message, God will save you this moment forever. And then you work through learning Pauline sound doctrine so you can get a full reward there. Because if you don't get in this one, if you don't go to this one, you're going to die and you're going to end up at that one. You don't want to go there. That's the lake of fire, the second death. Let us pray. Thank you.